what's up gorgeous welcome back to another video this is the third episode of soul searching and it's a valentine's day special so i hope you enjoy before we start the video we are going in with our elf hydrating booster drops and the primer so picture chicago late 1920s Gang warfare is crowding the streets. Al Capone is the lead chief of bootlegging, gambling, and prostitution, and violence is on the rise. February 14, 1929, Valentine's Day. It's the wrong day to be a member of Al Capone's rival gang from the North Section. Irish gangster George Bugs Moran does his business out of a garage on the North Side, and on this specific day, they were expecting a whiskey shipment. Seven members of Moran's operation were gunned down, five of the members being actual gang members and two of them just being affiliates. They were gunned down by four men, two dressed as police officers. And the assailants even arriving in a police car. The victims were lined up against a wall when about 70 rounds of ammo were unleashed on them. The murder weapons were Thompson guns or Tommy guns, which were popular among mobsters at the time. The crew most likely did not resist facing the wall as they believed that they were being subjected to a police raid. When officers from Chicago 36th District finally arrived, all the members were dead except for Frank Gusenberg, who was left barely hanging on. When questioned about the incident and asked who the perpetrators were, Frank simply replied, no one, nobody shot me, staying true to his code. I've seen several different numbers of how many times Frank had actually been shot. Ironic that he claims no one did. But the number that I've seen that people like to go with is the number 14, which shot 14 times on February 14th. Frank had died just hours later in the hospital. The police had gathered that men dressed as policemen walked in pretending to arrest the men, hence them facing the wall. and shot them and all I have to say that is if it was that easy to just walk in there and bust them up for this illegal activity why hadn't the police already done so Moran was supposed to be at this meeting however him and two more men had arrived just minutes late when they were starting to walk up they saw the policemen exit the police car so they just kept on walking, so they missed being killed by literally minutes. Could you imagine them like being on time and then this count going up from 7 to 10? And then not only that, but like this is a major crime lord. Imagine if he had finally been taken out. There'd be some Gotham stuff right there. The casualties were Peter Gusenberg, age 41, and his brother Frank Gusenberg, age 37. Them two were the top enforcers of Moran's whole operation, as well as Albert Kachalek. I'm guessing I'm saying his name probably wrong. He was 42. Adam Hayer, 40, was the business manager for Moran. Albert... Weishinger, 36, managed various businesses for Moran. The other two victims, Reinhard Schwimmer, 29, was an optician who just enjoyed hanging out with the crew. They, they were just friends. And John May, who was 35, did auto work for Moran, like repair work. Moran and others immediately blamed Al Capone for these murders. 
Al Capone was in his Florida home at the time and no one was ever brought to trial for this incident. A few months later, an investigation of a sheriff deputy in Michigan led to the weapons of the suspect, Fred Killer Burke. Two Tommy guns were confiscated from his collection of weapons that ended up matching the residue from the crime scene of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. The only witness to the murders was a dog named Highball. Police say that he was never the same after the massacre and therefore he had to be put down. News of the massacre had lined nationwide and everyday citizens realized the extent and the power of organized crime and the effect that it can have. Years after the incident, Moran told the police only Capone kills like that, which is ironic because when it came time for the police to finally talk to Capone, who was in Florida, he said the only man who kills like that is Bugs Moran. So apparently they have a very similar killing style. what I gather out of it. I don't know about you. The event put an end to anyone who clearly thought that they had rule over Capone. But it also was the downfall of both of their reputations and careers as organized crime lords. Because this event was the last confrontation of Moran or Capone, Capone was jailed in the year of 31. Moran had by this time lost way too many men to continue moving forward. A section of the wall that was the victims were lined up in front of is now on display at the Moth Museum in Las Vegas. Um, someone bought it when the garage was being torn down and that original owner had like painted red paint so painted blood around the bullet holes that were still on the wall and that's how it is kept in the museum was it Al Capone who was behind this incident? Was it someone else who knew the location, knew when the whiskey drop was supposed to happen, and just walked in there? Really, why hadn't the police already done that if it was that easy? Would Capone have continued to be in the lead of the mob game if Moran had showed up on time? The people who were bringing the whiskey, did they ever show up? Oh. Did Valentine's Day have any significance with the day of the attack? Hey gorgeous, I just wanted to pop in real quick and add in some other little details that weren't included in the original filming of the makeup. Calvin Goddard was the forensic scientist who discovered the weapons from another case that was used for the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. This pioneered forensic ballistics and is now used as standard testing for evidence. This event also, to some, paved the way for the end of Prohibition, which doesn't come until December 5th, 1933, but it still people credit it to being the start of this due to the continued crime rate after this event. It didn't take that much time for Moran to slowly fade out of the picture like I mentioned earlier. He lost a lot of men, so he didn't really have that grip on his territory anymore. So this does leave Capone in the lead, and not just in the lead, he's like the only one controlling the game for a little bit before Prohibition comes, and he gets arrested right before that. So for a little while, Capone is just running the game, and no one really wants to step up and be that guy that has to 
to make him stop. This event is also credited to the beginning of changing gun laws. In Chicago alone that same year, there were 16 gang-style killings, which resulted in 64 deaths. This was a familiar concept to these big cities, but in rural areas, this was like world-shattering information, so people decided that changes needed to happen. This is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed listening to the facts and details about the St. Valentine's Day murder. Um, Al Capone was mentioned in this video. And I'm thinking about doing a video just focused on him, so if you want to see that, let me know. Um, if you have any questions about how I achieved this look, or if anything wasn't clear, let me know. Make sure you like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, go check out the Instagram and the TikTok, and see you later. Quick little story about my, um thumbnails I keep forgetting to take the thumbnail picture like I just made the TikTok where I did this to this look so now this is gonna have to be my thumbnail picture so